What's up, guys? Michael Gilly here from Flow Marching, along with my colleagues Andy Connors and Andy Shama, and this is the drill down. And we are going to dive into a little bit of everything that's happened this past week, including DCI Minnesota. We're going to talk about our new ranking system that we got uh, coming out, and we also have the DCI Tour Champions and Drums Along the Rockies. So. We're going to just dive off into the show. How are you guys doing? Great. Good. Some, some exciting shows happening, <laughs> some exciting stuff happening in the in the drum corps season right now. It's really like, I felt like this is the week that kind of things have changed, where I feel like the, the knob has officially been turned all the way up. So it's definitely exciting. And I feel it. I know the cores are feeling it. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to talk about it. Yeah. You, you hit July and that's when, like you said, like the heat gets turned up a little bit. You start to get into some of your bigger regionals, some of your bigger contests. Um, you start to see the, the tour kind of break off from... Um, open and world being at the same time to being kind of world class and open class that's when you really start to see that happen so yeah, yeah. uh july is when it all starts to really kind of go down and what you think about you you think in terms of the season itself we're still in the early part of this season mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we're only like four weeks away from world championships. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? I was I was doing something on Twitter the other day where I was just like, I just want to know like how many days away we are, and it was thirty four. And I think like wow. every reaction was like, what? <laughs> like how is it already at this point? And yeah. we're here, like, yeah. It's a, it, <laughs> this is and this is my almost my favorite part of the season, except for championships week, because we're starting to really see the full production value of these shows come to fruition, and we're starting to see like more elements be added and we're, we can start comparing from where they are now to where they started out in the beginning of the season. And it's really cool to see, you know, some people are got a steep, much more steep curve than they're used to seeing at this point in the season. And, and which is, it's like you said, what you're, what you're starting to see are changes and additions into the shows mm -hmm. that designers have been planning since, you know, January and mm -hmm. February. They knew that they were coming, mm -hmm. yeah. but they kind of held them as, you know, the ace in a hole. And now they're starting to kind of pull those Show out. Show their hands, you know? yeah. Um, I, I know I'm hearing some kind of back rumblings right now. I know we're going to talk about cadets in a little bit, but yeah. we, we we know or some things are coming for those guys. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, and we, we can't wait to see them. I saw some of the stuff at, at, at Indianapolis. I don't want to give too much away, but we know things are coming for them. Uh, and you know things are coming for everybody. And we're yeah. starting to see some yeah. of those things come to fruition. Um we had our first uh, big regional this past weekend, DCI Minnesota. Um, you and I were on. Uh, yep, we were there and, in person, yeah. and it was definitely something that I like. I take away so much from those moments, and being there live is something that, like, I think if anyone, if you ever have the opportunity of doing it, like, you got to get there. Yeah, yeah the, Minnesota is an amazing stadium, amazing venue, great weather. The city is awesome. The city is really cool. City First time very, I had cool. been there, yeah. I have to say, I have to bring this up. We almost died. <laughs> we did. Oh my <laughs> I'm, I'm not lying. I don't know if we, we've told you this. Yeah, somewhere. you haven't even gotten through the whole story with me yet. <laughs> we, we did. We literally almost got killed in Minnesota in the lot, which wouldn't have been a bad place to go. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> if you're going to die, you die in the lot of a drone oh floor. Like, it might as well happen. Yeah, just watch out for the trains in Minneapolis. Yeah, the, the lighting out. signs aren't that great. And if you're riding in a go-kart or a, a golf cart, uh, trains will probably win. Yeah, and from what I know, those trains are pretty new to the city of Minneapolis, too, yeah, and new a, to the show experience. Yeah. Because so, they do, they come through like right in the middle of the lot, and so like yeah. you had groups like waiting to like pass over the track, and yeah, there's no, there's no that. like of the security, I don't know, gate, I guess you would have for like a normal tram, like it's just open. So adding to the <laughs> excitement of the weekend of all the shows, we were literally like shaking after one point because we oh my got gosh. killed. So wow. anyhow, uh, moving on. Um, wow. So big big story of the weekend at Minnesota was SCV. Um, ending blue coats win streak yeah that yeah. had stretched back all the way to i think dallas of last year and wow. it's an amazing wow. streak all, all streaks eventually are going to come to an end and yep. that's actually one of the one of the reactions that i saw i was in the lot uh standing next to um the front ensemble at blue coats and they were actually loading up and i was talking to one of their administrator staff and this you we could hear the scores happening uh, from the stadium and he literally looks up and he's like it had to happen. Had to end sometime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you, you didn't. What you, what's remarkable about it is, is the performers. You didn't see them like off in the corner, just like you know, oh my god, reactions. It's like, okay, yeah, we got beat. 
yeah. Time to move, move on. on. Time to go get better. Step you know? up. It, well, you just you just take that next step in uh, in your rehearsal the next day, and it, it almost lights a fire under you. Yeah. You know, it could be a really good thing for the blue coats. You know, and and I'm sure it will be. They, just the way they approach uh, the season, it's not about winning. It's just about you know excelling at the highest level. And, and, and let's face it. Over the course of the summer, over the course of these many performances, you're gonna have a bad night. Yeah. You, you're gonna have a bad run. Yeah, everybody does. And I actually heard that um, one of their trumpet soloists was having some chop issues. Maybe they had injured or something um, in the previous days um, to mi- oh, leading really? up to Minnesota. But okay. I did catch a video of them rehearsing yesterday and heard her playing um, a solo at the end of the closer, and she sounded great again. I actually marched with her, and she's always been an incredible trumpet player, and she can really handle that turnaround um, from an injury like that really easily. And, and you know, you, you know, we're we're talking about the, the fact that a, a core lost the show, but there's these nothing guys to are frown still at. amazing. <laughs> there's yeah. nothing to frown at. You it know, is such uh, an impressive. I season. think we've got cool. some we've got some uh, video of um, the Bluecoats uh, from their show. Not yeah, only do, yeah. we actually have a Andy did a great job of capturing this. Um, uh, oh, the time lapse. The time lapse. Yeah. So the first part of the video is actually the time lapse that you that you captured here. Um, the time lapse is just of its opener. Yeah, um, that drill is just so fun to watch. It's it's crazy, and to see the lines clarity. You know what I mean? Like every time they make a line, you can really see it move. Like the the quickness that the time lapse gives you, it makes it see like how their steps are incredible. Like yeah, they're, yeah. they're it's, already it's so like, clean. Yeah, it's it's just a machine moving throughout the field. And being up in up high in the press box at, at Minnesota and watching this show for the first time, really high up. Um, really, and this is the reason why I wanted to pull the, the video up. You see the velocity of this yeah. drill, and throughout the show, like I, I was like, "Do these guys ever stop running?" <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. That's just like it, the difficulty is through the roof in this kind of drill. They may be doing follow the leaders, but it doesn't matter because the demand is so high throughout the whole length of the show. The sustain that these that is being demanded of these members, the fact that they all have to run around for so long and use this. this jazz running technique that they're yeah. using it's just a fun thing to watch as a as a fan and as as a as a percussionist you know it's one thing with you know with the drums but especially for a wind player as a brass mm-hmm. player jazz running and maintaining <laughs> a contact with your embouchure is uh, oh my gosh it's, well it's it's unbelievably difficult well and and what they're doing with with the the jagged line too and yeah. the the timing demands that comes along with you know getting your your whole visual line of sight cut off from the drum major that's just something unprecedented now in this in this clip or this section of the clip that we're watching here this is actually their ballad Mm -hmm. um what i just find like shocking is the level of difficulty in the staging of where their horns are at they're facing backfield and they're playing their impact moment of their ballad backfield yeah and it's also credit to their sound engineering (laughs) that they're able to take that sound that wall of sound that mm-hmm. it's getting pushed into an opposite corner and turn it around and use it with through the speakers up at the front um this is some of their uh some of their uh their drum break actually right here and again the use of the stage use of follow the leaders use of speed i i can imagine going underneath of those things there's not you, you know, can't see especially like right in the like they're they're using i think we heard that they're like theater curtains like yeah real they're, theater they're curtains. heavy so they're heavy black. curtains yeah yeah Yep. And, you know, there's stuff underneath it. I'm sure there's um, – I, I would love to get, like, a tour underneath of that. I know. we got to get under stick, there. <laughs> might have to stick a GoPro camera underneath that and see what's, see what's happening underneath the stage. But um, just the fact that they're using the stage the way that they do with the velocity that they're doing it is just absolutely remarkable. And especially the end of the show uh, – it's going to cut to it here in just a second. The end of the show, when they're up on the stage and they're mm-hmm. coming off – now, actually, one thing I wanted to point it out here, on the stage right now, coming up on the back side of the stage, you see the center tenor drummer, mm-hmm. and then you see the other tenors on either side of them <laughs> split out five yards apart, and they're you know running forward playing their tenor break, and I'm just like, oh, wow. Like, the environmental demands well, of mm-hmm. that moment is just absolutely unbelievable. And they do it more than once, too, where their tenors yeah. are spread out. I know every time you watch the show, Michael, you're, you're just amazed like that how far apart these tenor players are and how clean they're playing. Yeah, and, mm-hmm. and what you're what you're learning is that they're using such a great uh, tool with the in-air monitoring that they've got going that allows them to do this and it's it's a credit to their sound design team again. 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 
uh, that they're doing this. And you see them running off the front of the stage right here. Freaks me out. Every single <laughs> time. Like, I'm just like holding my knees. Like, my knees hurt watching this show. Yeah. And, and it's not like it's a small angle that they're coming down. No, they're yeah, coming I was going to ask, very, what do you think steep. that angle is? Yeah. I don't know. But it gives a whole new meaning to like the vertical. Well, the vertical demand. They're literally raised literally. up 10 <laughs> feet up <laughs> in the air. Yeah. And so it, it adds an, uh, adds a three uh, a three dimensional element to their drill. Yeah. Um, you know, it's another use of props, and, and it's an amazing show. Now, a lot of times, you know, for their standards, Minnesota may not have been, you know, their best run, and that's yeah. the reason why SCV caught them. Um, but it's not to say that they are performing at a bad level. Yeah. Right. It, and they I've, just had a bad night. I've been saying this a lot this season. The true winners are the fans this season so far. This, Since I've been involved in drum corps, this may be the best season from top to bottom, from first place to last place everybody's shows are great this season it's a really really a joy a big joy to be on the in the stands this yeah. season they, they really really are um now we do have to talk about scb uh they Incredible. come out just guns blazing yeah uh their show continues to evolve and credit them for making the jump and ending the streak mm -hmm. and you if you're not considering them for the top spot at the end of the year like you'd be silly yeah like yeah. I anybody within the top four, top five, all have a shot at this now this year. Um, we've got some good, we've got some good shots of SCB uh, performing. The thing that like absolutely blows me away about their drill is some of the mathematical nature. Like you can see the po the pods of four kind of yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. love that as they're moving through. Not to mention the guy that's getting cartwheeled <laughs> <laughs> across the field. Yeah, how do you think you decide that person? Like, I don't like, know. <laughs> okay, who wants to roll in the middle of the prop and get dizzy and then like come out of it and like still have to play and march? Yeah, I think I, I'm, I'm I sure think it was just luck of the draw kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm noticing something. I screwed up with the the graphic, so it's it's bleeping on and off there. But whatever, uh. <laughs> it doesn't make up for the drill. And and again, right here, it's like, have you ever seen a color guard flag that's you know con connected like for like almost like, almost like 35 right? yards and stretching all the way across like those dragons that you see in China? That's exactly what I was thinking. This moment was really big for me watching from the stands. Um, I I don't think I've seen it in WGI. I saw it this past year in WGI with the the connected flags. But then in the moment when they go across the backfield. The, the way they just rip them across, like, they, they really take them apart, and it's so fluid, and yeah. it's so beautiful. Like, it yeah. really adds this, like, colorful element that you, you don't see anywhere else in the show, but it's, it's added so gracefully that I, I couldn't keep my eyes off of it. Right here um, on um, side one, right behind the pit, you see this follow the leader that continuously builds by adding pods of four that w when you watch it live, it, it flies by so quickly but when you watch it a couple of times, you're like, oh, wow. The, the mathematical nature of that drill here, again, the symmetry within a circle and what they're doing with their drill, how they pull in, they move the props very they, – they move the props like they would a, a performer. Yeah. And how they build into this circle, how they do this, what, what's going on. Like I can't imagine the amount of timing and planning it takes for a drill writer to pull that off. Yeah, yeah especially right here where they're just interweaving so so gracefully. That, that's got to take a lot of confidence from a performer's perspective. You know, they are just really going in blind, just putting their blinders on and saying, I'm going to my dot, my dot basically, and everyone else, I'm just trusting everyone yeah. else around me to do the same exact thing, and it'll work perfectly. This is one of those times being a dot pirate has to, <laughs> yeah. has to actually help. Yep, uh, yep. Uh, but they have a great, great color guard moment um, mm -hmm. coming up in the middle of the drill after this. And just how they're moving in and out of the props with this drill. And it's just clean. Like, the drill is clean. It's already. They, in Santa Clara Vanguard's drill this year creates kind of an interesting juxtaposition to what blue coats are doing. Because it seems like, it feels like this approach is much more old-fashioned. Kind of like what, what we could have seen in drill from the Cavaliers. The um, early 2000s. Yeah, yeah, in the 2000s. And, and the blue coats are doing a very modern take. Um, kind of on, on drill, using a lot of jazz running, some free form stuff, um, a lot of character work, um, the dancing and stuff that fits their show. But it's just like cool that these shows can compete at the top yeah. and also you know, still lead the activity into a cool direction. Yeah, it, it, what I'm seeing from these guys and you know, 
their their percussion section is again phenomenal. Yeah, their of course. their brass line. <laughs> you're you're heaping praises on those. Yeah, guys very as well happy too. to hear their their mellophone line is is incredible. Um, just love hearing this kind of power come from Santa Clara Vanguard this year. And it, it's a it's a it's a dark sound. It's a but mm-hmm. it's. And you know they're running too. There's nothing <laughs> to say. They are. <laughs> Blue coats aren't the only ones running around the whole show this this year. <laughs> no, but I, I'm a, I'm appreciating Vanguard's um, execution of their show right now. Yeah, and I think that's what uh, I think that's what caught you know caught Blue coats a little bit. And I think I want to go back to kind of what Andy said before that you can kind of mix these two ideas. You have the traditional kind of footprint that is drum corps, and now we have this modern side. And the fact that we can bring these together in a community that's, for the most part, accepting it yeah, is, is I would really say, unique. Yeah. And it's very accepting of the way that the activity is going. Mm-hmm. And we're seeing more people get on the train and just kind of like understand that this is a this is going to be a good thing for the activity because it's just so so much more immersive for the fans. It's so much more exciting from a fan's perspective. Right. But that the traditional aspect isn't gone. No, not and at like, all. Like I can't stress that enough. Like you're always going to have the, the footprint and like the stairs leading up to the modern part that is drum core but like that foundation's always going to be there and like we're never going to get rid of that yeah yeah right um you know some other notes from the show that up in minnesota legends have some great new uniforms in open class and these guys are really really good yeah. um phantom continues to impress they, they seem to be having a good year uh blue stars as well crossman um it, it was first time to get to see scout show those uniforms are unbelievable in purpose so cool yeah they they like they do justice in person too. Like you yeah. see the pictures online, and like the pictures are incredible. Like and the you, way and you they feel did like the photo it's shoot. Staged almost. Yeah, but you see them in person. Like it, it really like comes up to what your expectations definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, something that kind of came out this week is our, our first iteration of our ranking system, and yeah. wanted to kind of dive into it. It's been a long night on that, many a long <laughs> night. Yeah. Um, trying to rank a core is rank these guys. Um, it's almost impossible. Yeah. Uh, well, that's why we let the judges do it. <laughs> right. Um, you know, it, it's so hard to be able to compare them um, on a, you know, night in, night out basis. And there's so many different iterations. There's weighted uh, scores. There's average scores. Mm-hmm. There's uh, So some of the things that we did was we took into account, we, tr- we tried to take into account what they're actually scoring and what... Um, with how how quickly they may increase yeah um we did an article earlier this year and and we we both saw some interesting things in yeah this uh trajectory of score increase over the course of the season last year and yeah. it seemed to be pretty um i don't know what the word is uh pretty stagnant Consist- for or consistent oh. yeah consistent is a better word for it yeah yeah so it seemed to be that we figured out, and you correct me if this is wrong. Um, 0.49 was like the the, the average overall, score yeah. score growth per day, right? Per, per day, per day of the season. So it's interesting. You you obviously will have um, cores above the curve and cores below the curve, but in reality, everyone was moving about 0. 0.5 um, points per day mm-hmm. by the end of the season. It's really interesting. So we wanted to kind of apply that to this season and see how everybody's comparing to last season and it, and it's we've kind of tried to build this so that it always is getting more accurate as each day of the right, season goes on right and so what we what we have is we kind of have a handicap built in that takes what their current score is takes how many days they have left in the season and we're we're, we're projecting all the way to August 12th so we're projecting hey if everybody makes finals here's what they have this many days to possibly get better and saying Okay, they're here. You know, the trajectory says that they should be here, mm-hmm. and we're we're using this end marker as as a way to project. You know, where, where we're going to say that they're going to finish at. Yeah, and we did that <clears throat> for overall. So all of DCI, world class and open class combined, mm-hmm. because you know, at the end of the day, when semifinals uh, or when prelims hit, it's it's everybody going to five make it yeah. the next day. Mm-hmm. Um, so we do that for overall, uh, we do that for world class, we do that for open class, and then we do that for all of the captions for both classes yeah. so that we can we can monitor how people are doing. Um, you know, and what's kind of interesting, one of the caveats to that that we saw this, this past weekend was um, Santa Clara's drumline beat Blue Coats heads up in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on, uh, was it, it was July 8th, uh, that 
Glucose scored a 16, and that was Minnesota. On the very next night, they scored a 17 in drums. Yeah. So it sounds like the guys got a little. <laughs> they had. They were fired up on Sunday night. <laughs> sounds, it sounds, sounds like, like <laughs> they were fired up on Sunday night. Maybe they were a little jealous of uh, Cavaliers Crown and Cadets down in Florida at Disney. All uh, right. <laughs> um, so uh, 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 their drum line popped a big number, and their rankings reflect that. So the rankings reflect what they did score wise. And that's the reason why when you look at the rankings, the, the current rankings for this week, Blue Coats are number one in drums, even though they got beat by Santa Clara. So it's, it, it, you know, it's, it's an interesting concept that we're seeing, and we're going to adapt it. We're going to adjust it, but we have to experiment with it for the first, you know, for the first little bit. Yeah. And um, I know that there was also a part in the rankings that you're seeing scores over 20. Can you kind of explain, like, where that's coming from? Yeah. So, you know... I can't imagine how hard it is for a judge to put a number down early in the season. Oh, my gosh. And say, okay, I'm going to give them a, a, a 14-2 or a whatever. Mm-hmm. And it have enough room between a 14-2 to a 20 for them to grow right. however much they're going to grow. It, it, it's just it's almost impossible. Yeah. And what we're seeing is – Early in the season, there are times in which um, numbers are, are, are awarded, and based on the trajectory that we had calculated out over, you know, doing some research, um, it shows that they're going to surpass 20, which obviously we know is not going to happen. I can't, they can't do that. Right. So what that's telling us is, is that eventually those numbers are going to kind of plateau and level off, yep. especially when you start to see bigger contests like San Antonio, Allentown, Atlanta, where you have to, you have a, a range of scores and you're like, okay, they're here. We have to, you know, Merge fit them all them, into yeah. place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah, right now, just if you if if we set the formula and you put the numbers in and you just let the numbers run themselves they're, some it it they're projects over 20 yeah better right. than 20 yep. and obviously we understand that that's not going to be the case sure the numbers are going to level out um and and as we get longer uh, as we get further into the season we're going to re- you know more and m- there's going to be less and less of that handicap that's yeah. that's kind of like in. half-life yeah a little bit yeah. it's going to die off and the scores are going to be a little bit more accurate yep um but for right now yeah especially in brass actually we're, yeah we're yeah this- a lot. they're getting rewarded i mean th- this is one of the best seasons we've ever seen in the brass uh caption a lot of cores are being rewarded for having mo- more difficult books um the what the writers are giving these members um than what we've seen in previous years. You know, Blue Coats have a really comp- compl- complex um, brass book this year. Um, mm-hmm. Santa Clara Vanguard obviously is performing very well. Um, the Blue Devils have, have an incredibly difficult um, brass book, especially in The Flight of the Bumblebee. Um, and then the way that they change styles is also impressive. Um, Carolina Crown, obviously, like nobody can say anything about Carolina Crown's brass. Um, Matt Harloff's doing a great job, always has been since he's been there. Um, and then even down in like Boston Crusaders, Blue Stars Land, like those brass lines are are having really strong years than what I'm that I'm what I've been seeing, um, you know, since I marched. Mm-hmm. So it's really great. It's really enjoyable. Like I've talked about it so much during the show, even where I'm just excited to watch drum corps this year because everyone is is coming out with something new, a new step in the direction for their programs. Mm-hmm. And you spent some time this past weekend on on the south side of things. Yeah, when we down were there up in north Orlando. almost getting run over by trains. <laughs> he was down. <laughs> you were sa- getting downpoured on. <laughs> he, he was in he was in the south experiencing what the weather can do in Florida. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got to go experience um, central Florida in the rainy season, so that was exciting. <laughs> um, I spent some time. Um, down in Orlando. To, you, you spent some time learning how to swim. Learning how to swim, getting soaked. Yeah, running from shelter to shelter during a rehearsal that I was visiting. Um, but uh, we spoke about it earlier about the additions that are being made so far into the season, and um, in, in particular, Boston Crusaders unveiled a uh, new ending this season that they've actually had in their back pockets since about spring training. But at Orlando, they pulled it out for the first time, and I'm not going to give it away. I'll let everybody kind of watch it on their own. Mm-hmm. But it's super exciting. It had the crowd on their feet for the last 30 seconds of their show um, on Saturday night. I was on the field shooting video. It was just a complete it, it really took me back to like one of the first times i ever watched drum corps that's how exciting oh, wow. it was for me um 
But I mean, just to speak more to that, um, I was in the lot with Boston Crusaders, um, kind of bouncing back and forth. Mm -hmm. And um, Gino Cipriani is the new caption head. He just moved there from the cadets, a very long and good tenure with the cadets. And he he saw the crowd kind of giving it up for them. So he pulled out a chord, uh, chord progression that they never play in warm up. And he's like, OK, it's nighttime. And and this is a, a chance for the Boston Crusaders horn line to really give it to the crowd um, in oh, the warm up wow. lot. And so they played a little chord sequence really you know flex their volume <laughs> muscles it was so exciting i was i was just standing in front of them like taking it in and just it was pure drum core um for everything that it's worth and the moment for those players too i'm sure was something they're always remember yeah it's yeah. got to be one of the, like the best moments for them for the season so far you know it's it, what's what's amazing I, i'm old percussionist old drummer being in a lot for drum lines is unbelievable mm -hmm. so entertaining so much fun so active especially now that they're doing as much drill in the right. lot you know there's so much body movement and stuff like that there's something special about sitting in a horn arc mm -hmm. or in the middle of a circle of horns and letting them just like uncork their <laughs> loudest note that they can possibly play with good tone quality good sound quality and it's it's unnerving almost <laughs> like, yeah like yeah. you start vibrating on the inside, <laughs> it's so loud and it's it's unbelievable to experience that. I want to go off on a little tangent, but the reason that I actually decided to march Blue Devils was because I got to sit in their horn circle in 2014 um, at the Buffalo show. It was like the last week of the season. Um, I think it was on a Monday night or a Sunday night mm -hmm. right before World Championships. And I I sat in the circle. I was invited. I actually marched with their um, drum, one of their drum majors at Glassman. Um, and so he brought me in and was like, yeah, just enjoy it. And the, the trumpets and the mellophones played that triple tonguing feature from the, front, uh, the opener mm -hmm. of Fleeniesque. And, and that was just like a moment where it grabbed me and I knew that I had to, had to end up there. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. I think like, do you imagine that a lot of people who end up switching drum corps have moments like that? Or oh, I guarantee yeah. it. It's just gonna be, it's not even like, it, any, for, for, I can't speak for everyone, but for some people it may be gradual, but they're all, in drum corps, it's just everyone's so prone to having like like a snap of the moment. moment yeah, yeah, just like a, a light moment. Bulb, light bulb goes off yeah, and you're yeah. just, yep, Like a I, moment of clarity almost, like you found where you belong kind yeah, of. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so, yeah, man. Um, did you see anything else down in the, on the south side of things? So I did um, get a chance to catch a little bit of the cadets, but more interestingly is that George Hopkins, the executive director of the cadets, and uh, YEA, the, the organization that oversees the cadets, um, and cadets too, they, he, he does a lot of Facebook Live, and the cadets mm -hmm. will often share his thoughts and stuff like that. Um, but he, he puts out a lot of really cool information about the, the core that you wouldn't get. It's like an inside look, nice. and it's really awesome because it comes straight from the director. It comes straight from the top, so to speak. Um, so he, he did a, um, a little like a journal entry almost um, on his Facebook where he talks about um, some of the scores they were given this weekend and, and how they, they need to work on some things moving forward and maybe they aren't, they haven't progressed as, as fast as they would have hoped but he, there's nothing to be ashamed of like they are doing really well um, it's an impressive show. It's so accessible for the audience. It, it feels like, for me at least, it's it's just such a fun fun show to watch from the from an audience perspective. Um, but in particular, he mentioned um, some balance things. Working in you know s six or seven vocalists, I think it's six um, choral singers yeah. into your show it, it has got to be challenging, um, especially. And he said that it's it's kind of re being reflected in the percussion numbers because of um, balance with the front ensemble yeah. so the judges can't hear the the marimbas and uh the the front ensemble so it's it, interesting it, it's an interesting uh, you, you bring up balance um every time you, if you think about it every single time that they unplug their electronics that they unplug microphones that they unplug their you know whatever their wireless mics um or that they're readjusting their sets on their marimbas and their in the rack and the timpani and everything it's always going to affect the balance. Like mm -hmm. e even though it's even though it's programmed in the computer and they hit a number and it resets to the exact number that they left it off, it doesn't matter. Like it's going to change. Mm -hmm. You know, even it, humidity it, will change the right. way that it, that balance works. Electronics are funky. Uh, Weather is going to change. Mm -hmm. The the sound environments for the stadiums that they're at. Yep. From where they're rehearsing at to where you know they're going to perform at. Um, 
everything changed. Not to mention the fact that when you put it on an eighteen wheeler and it <laughs> rattles inside right. a box for a while, things change, and um, it, it shows it. it it shows credit to the sound design guys for all of these guys, yeah. for all of these cores, that they're able to hone it back in as quickly as they do and and get it dialed in. Uh, it's become like its own caption almost. It is its own caption. Yeah, it's, it's just like it's a new – it's not the brass, it's not the percussion, it's not the color guard. It's sound design, and it's it's really cool development and the way drum core is going, and I think it's going to enhance everything. What do you think? Two years or three years before they actually have like a caption award at TCI <laughs> oh, for wow. electronics? Oh man, I don't know. I, I thought it'll know. be longer than that. Yeah, I. I'll go four. I'll go four. We are seeing integration <laughs> pretty much across the board with with uh, electronics now, but being able to excel at that is something different, and being able to you know be scored on that is something different. But. Um, it, it, it's. I think it's, it's going to get added here pretty soon. But yeah. then it would require everyone to have it, you know, right? Well, right. Well, if you want the points, I suppose. Yeah. Um, That'd be interesting. Well, we'll have to keep I our don't eye on necessarily that. Would require it. You know, you don't have to have. You know, a drum line. You don't. I. I you need it, but <laughs> yeah. you absolutely From need your it. perspective. I guess right. you see that with like symbols. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, everyone yeah, has there's symbols. A good point. So. A great interesting point. point. You don't need a symbol. Some people would say you don't need a symbol line. Some people would say that they need all could just go away. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. depending on who you talk to you. So um, we've got a huge week coming up. Um, we've got uh, two shows that are going to be uh, streaming on Flow Marching. We've got the GCI uh, Tour Champions in Northern Illinois. Yep. First um, one, first tour champions. Yep. Yeah. Um, Colts, uh, Academy, Crossman, Blue Stars, uh, Phantom, Cadets, uh, Vanguard, Cavies. Uh, it's going to be the first time that we're going to see uh, Vanguard and Phantom. Um, Meeting up with Cadets and Cavies. Right. Mm-hmm. So you're yeah. getting to see, you know, Cadets have been on this East, uh, Cadets and uh, Cavies have been East Coast as yep. well too, right? They've been along, yeah, with Crown the whole time. They've been on the East Coast. Uh, Vanguard and, and Phantom made their way over to the Midwest this past uh, this past week, and now everybody's kind of coming back into the middle of the year, uh, middle of the country, yeah. and you're going to get to see an amazing show. Um, yeah. I'm going to be at the Drums Along the Rockies. I can't wait to be back in Denver. Uh, that was that was one of my favorite shows that I ever marched at was at Mile High Stadium. Uh, I, I remember very vividly having a rehearsal day, and we got to the rehearsal site, and the very first thing that the, the instructors did was to all right, we're going to do a run through right here, right now, mm-hmm. and it was just like okay, fine. You're in the middle of the tum- you're in the middle of the summer. You're in the best shape that you've ever been in your entire life. Altitude does not care. <laughs> you can be in the, I promise you, you can be in the best shape of your life, and you can still get altitude sickness. Take precaution. Kicked, oh, my God. It kicked the I never bleep out Denver. of me. <laughs> absolutely did. We got halfway. We got done with the run-through, and all of us looked at each other like, oh, wow. It's like a different yeah. show. <laughs> oh, my God. It, it sucks all the air out so, of you. Uh, so really. that's going to be amazing to see those guys. Um, BD, Blue Coats. Uh, are gonna are kind of headlighting that show. It's yeah. the first time that we've seen them going up against each other this season. Um, yeah, that'll be uh, one for the the records for sure. Yes, it will be. Um, I know um, a lot of people have been waiting for that head to head. Blue Knights are, are, are continuing to impress. Mandarins are still on a march. Not gonna uh, take my ass off them. Nope. Yeah, man, uh, they're they're closing in on that 12 spot right now for for finals. Um, yeah. Yep. Um, Cascades, Pacific Crest, Troopers, uh, and Open Class. We got Columbians in the battalion as well performing. So uh, this weekend's going to be in another uh, yeah. great lineup. And, show. and looking ahead to next week, next week is just going to be absolutely bonkers. Yeah, we'll uh, get into that on in our next show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're hitting. Down we're getting hole. to Texas though. Yeah. I don't know how we're gonna. <laughs> yeah. That's gonna handle. I'm, next week, I might just like die. <laughs> <laughs> Break out your Tyler's shorts if you guys know what those are. Tyler's shorts. They're like the the shorts that everybody. Okay, they have like the Texas flag on them. Oh yeah, everybody yeah, yeah. wears them. They're from Tyler. This store called Tyler's. Yep. This is like a big store. popular thing. The guy that just okay. moved down from Texas is talking about Texas like, shorts. And, oh my and, gosh. And the people that are born and raised here, <laughs> like, like, what are you talking that about? That must be a tourist <laughs> thing. It, is, it, it may be, but but when you march in recent years, at least everybody is just like. Texas, Texas, Texas. Yeah. If you, nobody stops talking about Texas if you're from Texas. And you're, once you hit Texas, there's always the stars at night are big <laughs> and bright. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, it's oh, so know. annoying. <laughs> that's that's going to be our new intro to our show, is yeah, him yeah. singing that. Oh right no. <laughs> <laughs> you done messed that one up. <laughs> but yeah, right. two big shows. Uh, they're both going to be live on Flow Marching. Check us out on social Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all at Flow Marching. We'll have Snapchat. I might give it to Michael, see if he'll do some stuff in Denver. Yikes. <laughs> uh, just, yeah, stick with us. We got the rankings now up on the site, so check those out. It's going to be a great rest of the season. Yeah. Yep. Um, so uh, for Andy Connors, Andy Shamma, my name is Michael Gilley. Uh, please make sure that you look both ways before you cross <laughs> a railroad track because you don't want to die. And Somebody's drink lots of water. The window <laughs> right now. But, uh, yeah, uh, make sure you guys check it, everything out on flowmarching.com, uh, all the social media outlets, and we will uh, catch you guys down the road. So this has been uh, The Drill Down, and we'll see you guys later. The stars at night are big <laughs> and bright. <laughs> <laughs>